<laughs> so, hi, I'm Judah. I'm a software engineer here at Formation. Uh, on my team, uh, we use Stack, and so I've gotten to know it uh, in depth. And at first, I was really excited about it, and then as I got to use it more, I developed some annoyances with it. So, I saw that the way any programmer does with I wrote another build tool. <laughs> uh, so there are many ways to build an Haskell project. There's generic solutions like Make and Nix and Bazel, which is a, uh, a project that Google open source. And there's also Haskell specific ways. Like the two most well known ones are Qual install and Stack. But there's also some lesser known ones like Mafia, which was developed at Ambiata. And so now there is this one here. And I felt like sort of obligated to put up the Rolling Nix PDCD comic where there's way too many ways to build a Haskell project. So the solution is to add another one. Uh, so what is Peer? So like Stack, it's a Haskell specific uh, build tool and its UI is motivated a lot by Stack and behave pretty similarly. Uh, individual packages are configured with the all files and the whole project is configured with a top level, level Peer YAML file. Uh, GHC and package dependencies are downloaded automatically from uh, Hackage. And the package versions are managed in a package set specifically to Stackage LTS, which is what Stack uses, uh, downloads uh, uh, from the same place that Stack does. And so this is an example of uh, a top-level YAML file, which looks pretty similar to Stack, where there's a resolver that says which package version you have, the local packages, and optionally you can override individual packages, uh, either with new versions or to add packages that are not in LTS. So what makes Peer different from Stack? Uh, the main difference is that it invokes tools like GHC and GHCP directly. So if you look at how Stack works under the hood, or if you've examined the details of its output, it actually uses Cabal the library for all of the individual package build steps, like for configuring it, for building it, for registering it, by installing it. Uh, and in contrast, Peer uh, calls the commands directly. In addition, uh, Stack sort of rolls its own uh, build system infrastructure, and Peer uses Shake which is a Haskell library that was written by Neil Mitchell, uh, intended for, to be used for writing build systems. Uh, if you look at uh, Stack, its build state is also mixed in. It has its own build state, and then Cabal has its own build state, and they're sort of mixed together. And uh, that, like, in contrast, uh, here has just the build state that's created by uh, Shake, managed by Shake. Um, the first version of Stack did actually use Shake, and then they moved away from it pretty quickly. And if you look at the blog posts that have been written about it, they didn't really find it that useful. And I think the reason is because they had this extra layer of indirection going through all the library. So I think Pure is an interesting like alternate point in the design space. Uh, another interesting thing to point out about Pure is that unlike vanilla shake, uh, build steps are run hermetically, uh, which means that every command uh, you uh, shell out is, uh, has strictly declared input and output files. And this is enforced by an internal library in uh, here. And the design of it is sort of motivated by tools like Nix and Bazel, which are designed from the ground up to provide uh, hermetic things. So, uh, since this is only kind of a minute talk, jump immediately to the So, this is a small Haskell project. To start, I'm going to demonstrate like how Stack behaves on this project and then show you here. So it's just a project with two packages, foo and bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Is that good? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's two pack. There's uh, just setting the resolver and it's doing stack and two packages for the bar. So foo is just a simple package that has dependencies on the basic text packages. And bar is a little more interesting. So bar depends. Bar has a library which depends on foo, and then it has three executables. So it has an executable which depends on neither foo nor bar, an executable that depends on foo directly, an executable that depends on bar, and then transitively on foo. And so if stack gives you a way of just building a single executable, so you can say stack build bar exe depend on neither, what you would expect is it build this executable and nothing else other than maybe the text package. You run this, so it immediately starts building foo, 
which is sort of unfortunate. Uh, and it also builds bar. Uh, and this is because it sort of has this course level understanding of things. Not only does it do that, uh, actually, let me just demonstrate this better. Stack clean from a completely clean build and build this. So it builds foo, it builds bar, and also prints out this message. Building all executables once after a successful build, only specific executables are rebuilt. Uh, Stack prints it out this and it's like, this is the best I can do, sorry. Because again, it's going through Cabal and it needs to wait for a successful build for Cabal to tell it what are the executables and what are their dependencies. Uh, so, okay, that message is kind of encouraging that if we rebuild it should work. So if I edit foo serve source food NHS, then now this, I'm going to edit foo, I'm going to rebuild depend on neither, and again, that shouldn't cause anything else to build. But unfortunately, it still now uh, starts trying to rebuild foo because it sees this local uh, dependency change. And it doesn't actually get as far as compiling the module in foo, but it does compile the module in bar for some reason. So, uh, like it, it gives you the correct results, but it, uh, it's sort of limited in how like, sophisticated it, it can be. So let's take a look at peer. So the peer configuration is pretty similar. Uh, the only difference is for this demo, because I had a short amount of time, I told it to use the uh, GHC that's already installed in my system. Uh, if, but if, if I hadn't said this, it would also download GHC. So if I say peer, just wipe out all peer state, and I say peer builds bar exc and on either. Now, because I wiped out all the state, it's going to do some, some initial setup. It's going to build the package text. Uh, and then when that's done, it'll just build the executable, uh, depend on either. And if I edit foo, and nothing will change. Uh, but then if I add the compile the one that depends on foo, then we'll build foo, and then the, again, there's this executable bar. And if I do this, and then uh, rebuild it, now it'll again trigger the build, and I can go back again, and well, it built nothing. So why did it build nothing? Because peer, like Nix, catches all of its previous build outputs. So this is it's actually uh, remembering a previous version, and so it doesn't have to rebuild it a second time. And I can demonstrate that there's a peer which command. So this gives the full path to the binary that was built. So it has this like SHA that peer generates automatically to distinguish it. Uh, all of the outputs are in this underscore peer artifacts with some address and motivated pretty directly by Nix. And if I go back to the other version and I say peer which, then it doesn't need to build it. It remembers that it's already there. And it can just tell you, okay, now it was this SHA, this hash starting with 4.9, and now it's this hash starting with uh, Dot G. And uh, accessing things these ways is a little annoying, so there's also a peer run command, which is just run that. And then I give you the other one, Z, then it runs the other version. Uh, so uh, this is a, again, I have very limited time to demo this, so I'll just try to show it doing something real. Peer build lens. So lens package is a little notorious because it has a bunch of dependencies. So what this is doing, the uh, <laughs> downloads are actually cached. Uh, <laughs> so like all the everything's already been downloaded from a uh, package, and then so it unpacks everything uh, going through the chain, then starts building them, and it's building these uh, using the um, kind of building in parallel automatically, which is a really nice thing to get from Shake for free. And then at the end, it's like building the lens package that should finish. Uh, is it building the really packages in parallel? Uh, it's act actually, it's building uh, every um, every line is a thing that's being built in parallel. So it does also have the ability to build like executables for a single package in parallel too. Yes. And again, again this is an issue. And so we get a build in less than three, which is pretty nice. Uh, again, this is one of the reasons it's so fast is because it's compiling with uh, dash o zero, uh, but it's still like there's a 
<clears throat> fair amount of overhead from Cabal and Stack that you're not getting. Um, and on like small pack projects, especially, like that's just noticeable. Okay, so I'm going to just wrap up uh, with this final slide. Just the current status, uh, it doesn't have full coverage, but even though we're not going through the Cabal library, we can still build 90% of all the packages on, hack on Stackage, which is pretty nice. Uh, the biggest blocker, other than a few like minor details, is a bunch of packages have uh, custom setup scripts, meaning like configuring, like basically mutating the configuration and build steps of uh, the Cabal build. And because that's tied so much to the Cabal, the library, uh, appear, which doesn't go through it, uh, doesn't have a direct way of doing that. I have some ideas to work around it, but we have nothing concrete yet. Uh, another nice milestone is that peer can build itself. Uh, you can write peer, build peer, or peer, run peer, or just keep going down the chain of that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so a few future plans for this. I'd like to add more commands. Like I think a peer rebel command would be really handy and tie in really nicely to everything. Just haven't gotten to that yet. Another is the artifact short store that I showed, uh, where you have, uh, it, right now, it's mostly per package, and I'd like that to be shared between projects. There's just a global store, but then if you do that, you need things like garbage left and just a little bit nicer management of it. And finally, uh, as I said before, Peer doesn't Peer implements a generic internal library for uh, making nicer hermetic builds, and I would like to kind of surface that and see if there are any other applications that can use it. Well, so that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks. Your first slide that had the yeah, sure. <laughs> so, sorry, yeah. Yes, this, there are 14 competing standards. Ridiculous, we need one standard that covers everyone's use cases. Now there are 15. Yeah. It does create a lot of balkanization when everybody's experimenting. It's good that everybody's experimenting, but at some point, you know, to make it in the real world, you know, yes, there has to be some sort of consensus. Yeah. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I have. Uh, moderate aspirations for peer as a result of that. Um, but like I I think there's like interesting uh, area design spaces that haven't been explored yet. Uh, and I like whether or not peer wins, I hope that the ideas from it can influence whoever wins. Um, so uh, staff has kind of two sides. There's the there's the build side, but then there's also the pre-build static dependency uh, find a good resolver for constraints that you have. Um, uh, Peer seems to do a really good job of getting the, the build dependencies uh, right and doing a, a smarter build. Are you going to look at the other side? Uh, no, I, I plan to shamelessly use uh, Stack. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Stack gives, gives you everything you need. Uh, and yeah, because that side's yeah. just really Yeah, it, it's just download a YAML file, look at it, and tells you what the versions are. Yeah. Okay. I'm just uh, two uh, <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> You use it internally? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens if I have a package that's outside of my source tree that I want to? Like, you know, say I, I'm a maintainer of two different libraries that I'm hacking on both of them at the same time, but I'm working on one other one, right? Is there a way to, for a computer to say, please build this other one instead of the one that you have a snapshot of? Uh, yeah, I would like to do what Stack does, and like we said, like the extra depths can be things that are local files or yeah. you know, repositories or like web repositories. I haven't implemented that yet, though, but I think it would fit pretty well. Any, okay, last question? All right, great. Thank you very much.